friends how are you and welcome to joy fido international my name is joy fido and today we're gonna be chatting about something again very exciting about our lives and how we can move it forward so you know what joy fido represents is about helping you discover the best of you giving you the best of you um, guiding you to know that side of you that's really amazing because I think what it is sometimes we don't see we don't see the good in us sometimes and because we have to deal with so much I, I like to call it noise um, some people call it distractions we have we have to deal with so much noise out there that we tend to forget the real thing that is really in us we tend to forget the real us and so my role which I believe is one of my missions is to help you discover the best of you and if you can find the best of you why would you have any issues at all so welcome on board So what we're going to talk about today is a topic I like to call power to create. And I've realized that we all, all of us as individuals, we all have the power to create. And why was that such a huge thing for me? You know, again, I like always to take us to the Bible. Because that's, that's the center of us. That's who we are. And it said for six days, God was created. The first day he created that, second day he created that, the third day, and so there was constant creation going on. And then on the seventh day he rested. But remember he created us in his own image. And then he gave us the mission to go here and multiply, which is go out there and do the same thing that I have been doing, continue to create. Now, why do we create? We create in order to, to have a better world. That's a big message, to have a better world. they take us back and they say the primitive age and, and we started and they give you images and we first we were on fours and then we became two and then now we stand tall and then when you hear people go oh they want to go back to primitive times remember the word primitive times so what does primitive times mean Okay, then you hear that man had to discover fire and put two wood together and shook it and then fire gave a spark and then he started cooking his food. So when you go back into history to find us out, you're going to find that so much was going on. And then how was man able to change the scenario? Hence, that power to create. And what helped us to achieve that? is our mind so what's in our mind that gives us ability to create remember just like our father who created us God said you know when you go into the Bible you say and God said let there be this and there was that let there be this and there was that so let the let the, let the rivers go up and let the sky go up and let the it come down you know so it was always let and so something unique happened to me when I was reading a book and it's this book it's called the science of getting rich by Wallace Wattles it's quite interesting because when when I read it, I don't really look at who wrote it. I just know hmm, it's definitely well it's what else. I just know the topic and that for me is all I wanted to know. 
and I, I got to know about that book from Bob Proctor on YouTube, which I watch a lot as well. And so the signs are getting rich, and I'm reading it. And it's all about creation, your ability to create. And so your mind initiates the thought. So God saying, let there be. It's the mind that initiates it. So we were not there. We don't know how the whole process happened with God. But he said, let there be. Meaning something initiated something in the thinking process. And that's why we need to think. Because everything we do starts with our thinking process. And when I was about to, to talk about this, the first thing was the creative ability of thought. You know when you think? That ability to think and use it to create. And you must have heard about this book, Think and Grow Rich. And then all I was curious about was What's this person thinking about that he's growing rich with it? Because I'm constantly seeking and trying to find out what's this big message about getting rich? And so this book made it a bit clearer. The ability to think and recreate that thing in human form. So is a thought in your head and then it comes in physical form. But it goes through a process. That's the big thing. It goes through a process. Here's the book, Think and Grow Rich. So where most of us end up, where we, re we prefer to be, is just the thinking side. We just think. Because our book says think. So we're thinking that it's just think, and you've grown rich from thinking. No. It's a process. So God said, and, and, God, and God said, let there be. So that's a process of thinking. And there was. So that's the physical side of it. So hence you hear the saying, be careful what you think about. You might just get it. Because there's this natural thing about us that the minute we think about something, our whole process starts to go towards that thing. And so, uh, I'm, I'm sure you've heard about, I mean, there are books, maybe there are, I'm not so sure, but I think there are. You are what you think about. Because it's just so normal for us to think that far, to say, okay, I want to write a book about thinking. You know, the same thing about you are what you eat. So you are what you think about, and that's who we are. That's who we are, and I tried, I tried using the idea in reality in my life to see if this whole thing is making sense. Reading that book exposed it so much more clearer to me. So th this is the way we are as human beings. You know, when a child is born and that child they call the, you know, in the science world they say tabula vasa. It's like a blank slate. That child is born as a blank state slate. And so as we're growing up, um, the environment, the people we are interacting with, so your mom, you watch your mom, your mom does something, or you think, oh, wow, that's how it's done. And so you repeat it. And so slowly, I mean, so, something that someone said to me recently, or we're having a conversation, and he said, this is quite interesting as humans. This is slightly a bit off topic, but it says when a child is growing up, especially about walking, this child wants to walk and he walks a little and he falls down, he walks a little and he falls down. Does the mother say to that child, stop trying to walk, just sit down there and don't walk anymore. Sit down. This is not for you. Just sit. No, no mother does that. Every mother, go on son. Go on, daughter. Go on, girl. Go on, girl. You can do it. You can do it. And so did. If you had children, you would know exactly what I'm talking about. And so the child keeps going, keeps going. And you know what happened? Eventually, this child walks. So that's the same thing with all of us. Even as we are older people, 
We are still children in the light of the world. Because what happens is, as we are trying to work in life, we encounter problems, we fall. Now remember your mom, she didn't say, remain down there, don't stand up, stay there. Your mom says, get up, try again, you can do this. So that's the same thing in life. Each time you're going through daily life and things are happening to you, just remember this. That's you growing up again as a baby trying to walk. And so when you encounter problems and you fall down, it takes you back. Stand up and go again because you're going to get there. you get somewhere. But sitting down there is not the answer because what, what, what's the outcome? You're not going to walk again. You will stay there as a child forever. That's the reality with us. So each time we come across a problem, it's for us to overcome it, stand up, and walk again. So that was something that just came to my mind, and I thought I should share that with you, to give you something to think about. So taking us back to our mind and the tabula basa, it's like we're all born with this blank slate. And so think and grow rich what comes to your mind that you process, that you encourage, is what is going to be your reality. So that's the power involved with your ability to think. So this book then started explaining to me how I don't know if I've done a video that mentioned this as well. It says our mind. Maybe if you've done a bit of farming, you have an idea what I'm talking about. It says the landscape in our mind is endless. It's endless. And that's the same thing with this blank slate. There is nothing there. And that's the same thing God gave all of us. So the whole idea is whatever you imprint on it, whatever you plant in that soil is what's going to reap or rather grow and become what you reap. So you hear people say you, you, you reap what you sow. You reap what you sow in the sense of a figment of a thought comes into your head. Just like now, I had this figment of thought. Let me do this video. It's in my head. I want to do a video. And then I decide, okay, you know what? Let's do this video. So we get all the lighting. We get the camera. And then I sit down and I start chatting with you. Where did it come from? It was an idea in my head. Let me do a video. The same applies to everything. Everything. Because you think about it. There is nothing created, especially here on earth, that did not come from a thought. Now let's let's take away natural things which God created. Okay, so the plants we eat, the animals, me and you, God created all of that. Well, in forms that we know about our mother, our father coming together. And then the seed is planted. But that seed also came from God's creation. That egg was God's creation. So, yes, all of God's things are there. But everything else, the thought of, oh, this wig has to be made, came from somebody's thought. Oh, yeah, I know women. You know, sometimes they want to have a different look. I know what I can do. I can put together strands of hair on a cap and they can put it on and it becomes a wig and it was done see that and god said let there be and there was so a human being thinks about it i want to create i have an idea now watch every time creation is about to take place i have an idea so that ability to have an idea is in all of us 
that's what I'm saying. It's a power to create. We all have that ability to have an idea. But see, what differentiates pe people, some people from others, is that ability to follow that idea to reality. Bringing that idea to its physical form. So this video is about reminding you and encouraging you to start transforming your ideas into reality. Because that's what the big difference is between those who create and those who consume. And what I tend to find, I'm not trying to, but you know what, I like to tell it as it is. We black people tend to just let other people do the creation. Other people should create. And my kind of mind is if I see anything that's been done, I want to know how that thing was done. Because I know I have the ability to create as well. So you don't tell yourself, oh brother, I really don't, I don't want to know. I just want to, I just want to enjoy it. So we tend to, you see all the designer brands who want to buy designer shoe and designer bag and designer perfume. And I just sit back and I look at this and I say, okay, yeah. Do you, do you know what we're doing? We are busy enriching other people. And you know what hurts so much? If you're African, if you're Nigerian like me, and you look back into the continent we come from or the country we come from, and you see the amount of wealth that God has put in there. That's a God form. God puts his on there. But you know what he does with us human beings? Go ye and multiply. Go and multiply these things that are put there. What do we do with it? We do absolutely nothing with it. But we all want to, including me, hop on the plate and go to where somebody else has created something based on what God gave them. A good example is Dubai. Now, I haven't been to Dubai, but everyone who's been there, and of course I sit down and I watch the YouTube version, you see the amazing creation that human beings have used their hands and their knowledge to bring to life. But this is me coming from Nigeria with all the money that country has provided. And we cannot create. We don't even have a decent airport. That's where the difference is. So if we can put that thought that idea into reality. In, in, we can play with it. Go with the process. And turn that thought into something that people can deal with. We will be able to create, you know, cut away this problem of unemployment in Africa. Because when I watch, I watch, you know, you listen to the news and you hear the stories of another migrant ship has been uh, caught at, on, on, on the sea and then 1,000 people that were escaping and migrating and emigrating and, and we don't come in the form of I'm coming in the sense of power, uh, power we come in the sense of I'm begging and then uh, here in Italy Africans they have been torn into another form of slavery so they use them to do many jobs and do workers but why would that not happen if you just come empty-handed begging. What do you think the person there is going to do? Roll, throw a red carpet and say, walk on it and come to lavish dinners with me and enjoy? Because we, we don't forget or we don't remember that human beings created these other countries that we all want to run to. And all the things that God gave us in our country, we're not prepared to look at it. We just think it's too much work. I mean, a good example which I like to share with us, many people that care to listen to me, is here in, here in England, for instance, or UK, a major staple food is potatoes. Potatoes is played with in every format you can think of. Fish and chips, chicken and chips, 
chicken and burger with chips uh you you name it mashed potato um uh, wedges and 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 the list goes on the list goes on potato with baked me potato with this and, and they just they just you you just they, you just try every iman, imagination possible which is another area because from the ideas you create an imagination you imagine something and when you imagine something then you try it out and when you try it out it becomes something something different you could give it whatever name you like And so if you want, if I take you back to Africa now or Nigeria in particular that I know about, we, let's even try the root crops. And so you have cassava, you have cocoa yam, you have um, there's a uh, tree leaf yam, and then we have the main yam, and then we have sweet potato. Uh, yes, we have sweet potato and we have sweet cassava and, and, and the list goes on. I'm telling you some of them, I don't even know the English name to tell you. And that's just root crops. But compare that with here, where we have just potatoes. Do you see where I'm coming from? And so, if this person has been able to use this one crop to imagine an idea, and say, what if I bring it with chips? What if I bring it, I mean, with chicken? What if I bring it with beef? What if I bring it with burger? What if I, what if I, what if I? And we have all this array of root crops, and we are not thinking at all, I don't want to know. I want to go eat that fish and chips. That's all that's important to me. That's why we're getting lost. That's why again my people suffer for lack of knowledge. That's where we are not using our imagination. That's where God gave us that ability to go here and multiply all these crops and we don't do that. Now what we rather do, we go to church and pray. God has already answered our prayers. Do we not get it? The answers are with us already. But now we are still going to pray and we are expecting him to throw that manna. You know, in during the time of the Israelites, manna had to be thrown down for them to have something to eat. But now there's all this food here and we are not thinking, which is where you hear think and grow rich. You think about it, you act on it, it becomes reality. And what I'm saying in this video is we all have the power to create. We all have it. Because we have the power of imagination. We all have the power of ideas. I just had an idea. And the idea is... I mean, one time I was having a chat with my sister in Nigeria and she said to me, you're not going to believe it. All the universities in Nigeria, they actually do take on lots of research. Lots of research work, trying to find out if we do this, do this, do this, what could happen? If we do that, do that, what could... They have uncountable amount of research. But no government in Nigeria is interested in bringing those ideas which are research into reality now we're gonna hop on the plane and go on holiday in dubai or go to u.s and go to england and go to now um, um the asian countries are really really hitting it on in tourism remember i'm doing tourism right now is is the area i'm really keen on again to see what we africans can do with our nature because the attraction, another area which, may, don't worry another time, I'll bring this to you, tourism, the power of tourism. Countries are creating billions. I mean, as at, as at 20, 2017, I think it's 8.3, um, yes, 8.3 trillion is what that industry is making in the world. How much of that is coming from Africa or Africa is getting out of it? Nothing. You know the beauty of tourism? It's like I have all these pounds telling in my hand. And I say I want to visit Zimbabwe or I want to visit Gambia. 
And so I, I take with me, for instance, let's say I take with me £3,000 or £4,000 and I'm going on holiday to Gambia. What do you think I'm going to do? Do that. I'm taking my £4,000 telling with me to Gambia to spend in Gambia. That's tourism. And so what tourism does for a country is the 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 hard currency of that tourist is being taken to that destination that tourist destination to be spent this person worked for that money in england for instance and is taking it to gambia to spend for instance so what is done invariably instead of gambia to create goods and products and and export to in uh, to england so that england will pay four thousand pounds for that goods Gambia sits there because it's created a, a luxurious, a exciting environment and me and I have come to go and enjoy that luxurious environment. They've invariably exported their, their hospitality, their ability to welcome me. So when they've done that, I have come and I have spent the money with them without them having to export any goods at all. Do you see the difference? So it's such a big thing that so many countries are getting the message. And the people that have really been enjoying this all these years is the Europeans and the Americans. And Europe gets 50% of that 8.3 trillion. Because they've been doing this for years. They understand the, 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 the benefits of it. They understand the value of it. And Africa, we are nowhere. We don't even have 5%. Of this of this hundred percent tourism cake and now Dubai has joined and all of the, uh, the, the the Arab countries are beginning to get the message and they are investing they are pumping their money into tourism hence everybody I'm going to Dubai. I'm going to Dubai. you don't get it you're taking your money to go and spend in Dubai that's the attraction and so we in Nigeria and other parts of Africa we don't have a clue about this and so we are exporting instead of even getting money into our country we are taking the little we have and we are taking it out and that's what our leaders do already anyway but now the individual is also doing the same thing we're exporting every little money we have give it give it to those who have you know what the bible says he he that has i mean to them that don't have the little they have will even be taken away from them because we are not using our senses. And so what ignorance is what's causing our problem. Well, it clearly says to us, my, pe my people suffer for lack of knowledge. So what ignorance is encouraging us to take the little we have to go and give to those who already have. And that's why when we come with all our skills, you remember when we say brain drain all our knowledge and we take it out of the country instead of bringing it back to support our system to help it to grow um don't look at me and say to me oh yeah good for you to say it why are you still sitting down there yourself i'm working on things so don't be angry with me but i've got to tell you how it is i'm working on it because i now know these things my knowledge is clearer because i seek knowledge but in the process of seeking this knowledge and why I'm coming up with all these things, I'm telling you the things I found out. We all have the power to create. Because that idea we all dream it of and it happens. And if we can think it, we can create it. If we can think about it, God said, and let there be, let there be, and then there was. That's the same thing with us. Remember, we are all made from the image of God. He created man in his own image. So we have the same similar capability of being able to create things. That's what he gave to us, the power to create. It's one power you, you don't see with the other living things. Animals don't stand up and say, I want to create something. Because look back into that history I was trying to say to you. So we started creating fire. We started creating, um, we're able to cook. And, but you know, you know what happened? That's where they call technology. Technology then happened. And so today, um, first we were walking, and then suddenly we said, oh, it would be nice if we ride a bit. So we got the, the bicycle, 
then from riding the bicycle we got the, the, the bike and from the back then we started they started creating cars but do you think where do you think all of these ideas were coming from from a human being all these people who created these things are all human beings and i say to all of us which is true our mission in life is to create a better world and that's why you see the world continues to evolve it is evolving continuously and apparently it says world without end we don't understand that because you know what happens we read the bible upside down and all of us we're still waiting for that day that the world will end it says world without end we don't know but the whole idea is the world is constantly evolving and human beings they're using their mind to create amazing things now we create uh, we, we, we managed to make the cars and then we could drive so it's no longer working for days. And apparently in the past, for you to travel from Africa to England, you're on sea forever. Okay, so they created different modes of transport. So there was the sea, then there was the air. So airplanes got into the scene and then there were so many other things that were able to move us around. Human beings did all of that. And so while well, that was still going on, so now you can see that this is even the one they called the bus 3883 or oh, 580 is it? The bus 8380 or something 380 bus Airbus 380 yeah. huge is like double decker could carry how many people? 1000 people or is it 500 people? 500. Huge amount of people can be moved from one one place to another. So he's making transportation easier. I mean, <laughs> only recently I just came back from America and probably I needed to talk about this. And obviously because I'm studying tourism, so I'm now beginning to understand the importance of having people visit your country. Trust me, lots of countries have no idea what this is, but the ones that know are, are reckoning. Because it creates huge employment. That's one of the biggest things that come out of tourism. And then, of course, it creates a lot of development. Because you cannot have people come into your country and, and then they'll come and be struggling. You want them to come and enjoy. That's what people are paying their money for. So all of these things are happening. And so countries that are smart about this are very nice to people as they arrive at their border. I mean, recently I came from Turkey and it was amazing. Seriously. You know, okay, it's assumed Turkey is a third world country, blah, 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 blah. But right now, Turkey is getting back its tourism because there was one time they were having problems, internal problems, terrorism and all of that. And things have started getting better. Everybody's going there now. And so I went and it was amazing. What I look out for being a, 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 a tourism student or, or practitioner, I look out for people who are practicing the action. So I watch out for countries that are practicing tourism, as in supporting it and stimulating or encouraging it. And so I've just come from Tur Turkey and at the border, there's no problem. Welcome. How are you? How long are you staying? Do you have just the basic questions and they are really smiling and happy with you. And you get to America and the attitude is different. I had a big fight at the airport, not not physical fight, but I was having this argument with this, with this um, attendant because of my luggage. And it's just one suitcase you're allowed now in America. And then I packed as much as I could into the suitcase to, to not stress me out too much. And she says it's overweight. So I take some of them into my cabin suitcase. And she now has issues with my cabin cabin uh, suitcase. But then, because, because I came through Canada. Because the plane, um, the plane they're using to take us from Canada, uh, from Lincoln where I was, or was it Omaha, to Canada, is a tiny little plane. It's so small. You couldn't, if you have a six foot tall or four, you'd probably be touching the ceiling. So they could not carry anything, no, no, no cabin case or, or space to put anything in. So that's my fault that you choose to carry a plane that's that small. And so because of that, suddenly my hand luggage or my cabin suitcase is a problem. 
but I'm traveling international. I'm not just going from here to Canada and that's the end of my trip. Well, I don't care. You should have. But by the time I'm getting onto the international leg, my suitcase, my, my um, cabin case is so tiny because these are huge planes. But you put me through this problem of arguing with me over my little tiny suitcase. Because you said it has to meet a certain dimension. And I just laughed and I said to her, have you guys, I mean, she's probably couldn't be bothered with it, but have you guys bothered to look at the, the statistics right now of tourism to your country? It's extremely low. Because people are fed up with being treated like this. When you work so hard to make your money and you bring it to your country to spend, you give them the impression that you're doing them a favor. I am doing you the favor. I am bringing my money to you. So you should treat me with respect. I know most countries don't understand that. And I'm telling you, that's including Nigeria, where I come from. They have no clue what tourism is. I mean, you could stand for hours on the queue waiting for your passport some immigration officer to look at you and then you're sweating your eyes out eyes not even skin eyes out because the whole environment is not welcoming so that's the big message the sooner we understand that life evolves and so while we are talking about this now technologies come to change us every day technology is changing now everybody lives on their phone I mean, right now, the shops on the high streets are all closing down because how many, this day somebody actually said to me the other day, why do you waste your time spend two hours going shopping when you could just order everything online? And so with attitude like that, do you see what's going on? Very few shops bother to open on the high street anymore because everyone's buying online. That's technology for you. And then the question is, who created that technology? Who's the one behind create changing the things that we're seeing? That's the power you have. That's the power I have. That's the power any human being on this earth has. That's the power God gave to all of us when he commanded us to go ye and multiply. That's what life is bringing to us. Continuous evolution of the humankind. And that's where you have a role to play. Your role is to discover the one that is yours. Your contribution to making this life interesting, welcoming, exciting. And I created, this is it, I created something as well. Your ability to learn how to work with hair. So you offer people that service. And I tell you, there's something I'm coming up with that's... What we're hoping to do is to encourage anyone with a skill to stand up and deliver their skill. Stand up and showcase your skill. Because every skill counts. Every skill matters. When I started with braiding years ago, people were laughing. Uh -huh, what are you going to do with braiding? No, braiding, everybody does braiding, braiding, braiding. But look at it. I created a product out of it. And this is just the beginning because there's so many more I can create out of it. And that's the idea. And that's the thinking and growing rich. That's the thinking and doing something and contributing to the world. So if you think it's okay to just sit down and do nothing and expect that you're going to get something in life, I'm sorry to tell you that that's not the case. The case is you have to Think, all that idea that comes to you, maybe when you're sleeping, maybe when you're in the shower, they are real. That's your blank canvas. That's God coming through you and telling you, I want to send this message out to the world through you. Just like the message is given me now to pass through to you, he's talking through me to tell you that you have that power to allow him pass through you too. Allow God to showcase himself through you because he's given you thoughts, he's given you ideas. Trust me, there are things I know that you don't know. There are things you know that I don't know. There's so many things you know I have no clue about. Trust me when people tell me things like that. Oh, really? I didn't know.
know and yes I didn't know there's no no one of us on this earth that knows everything no so if you were always thought about yourself but it's it's only me I hear people say that but it's, it's only all me what do I know no you know a lot because you're not only you're God in man form God created you to be man and so a piece of God is in you and each time you dump God down by refusing to do the things he's asked you to do, you're not helping him. You're not so godly only when you go to church and, 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 and put all your little, uh, you know, the widow's money, widow's might into the, into the offering. I, I read something the other day and, and, and it, re it was really mind-boggling. It says, if, if churches, and this is so weird, and I can say this about African churches or Nigerian churches. I mean, here, nobody bothers you. A typical mainstream church here won't bother you with your offering. But African churches, it's a big deal. The amount of money you put into the offering. And yet, they make, they make wealth sound so bad. It's not good to be rich. You have to be poor. And yet, they need your money. You say, if, if money was so bad, why do churches need money? So, if money is so bad, why do churches ask for money? That's a question you need to think about. That's, I need, I, I've thought about it. Money is not bad. You have to find a way to use the creativity God gave you to achieve something on this earth. Because each time you contribute to life, you're allowing God where he told us to go here yeah, and multiply. You're allowing his blessings to shine through the world. And that's why you see so much technology around you. That's what you're enjoying from other people who have allowed God to use them. So don't just sit back there and be the one who consumes designer clothes and designer shoes and, and amazing this and amazing that. And you don't think I should create something too. So the big message is today is you have the power to create. And that's the message I'm going to leave with you. You have the power to create. So start using all the ideas that come to you. Start implementing them. Start working with them. Because the minute you allow God to guide you, he will take you through all the steps. He will tell you what you need. And I hear people say to me several times, but I don't know when God is speaking to me because I really don't hear him speaking to me. God speaks to you all the time. What's happening is you're blocking your senses from hearing him. Open up your heart. Just open it. You'll see instructions will be very clear. For this one, I think you should do this and you should do that. I get it all the time. So I'm hoping that I've been able to touch your life today. I'm hoping that I've been able to start pulling out the best of you because that's my dream. That's my mission, to pull the best out of people. I mean, the, the Bible said the, the, the harvest is, is more. There's a lot of harvest out there, but the people, the people to actually go and do the harvesting are very few. So I want, I want to be able to pull all of us out to get up and be something and add add value to life because you know what's interesting if you choose not to do anything your life is not going to last forever and if you choose to do something is equally not to not going to last forever to all of us this is a specified time the beginning and the end so within this beginning and end what value do you bring on board that's what i want us to remember and think about i want all of us to go into ourselves and start finding out what this unique thing is that God wants to bring to life through you. I don't want to hear anybody complaining and again I don't know what to do because there is something for you to do. So I'm hoping we've, we've, we've touched on a few things that, that will give you something to think about today. And so you're going to think and you're going to grow rich. So Please remember to share this video with all your friends. You'll be surprised how things like this can help to create an amazing reviving community where you are. So share it with them. Give us a thumbs up because when you do, you encourage us to bring you more. And like us. Again, we're on so many social media because we love technology. And so we're on Instagram, we're on Braden, we're on Facebook, we're on LinkedIn. Snapchat, I haven't really been doing anything with it. 
but technology helps so i look forward to seeing you in the next video and may god continue to bless you and protect you in everything you do